Alhamdulillah, uh, Salaam Rasulullah. Today we'll talk about uh, society. Spring is not a seasonal, like the climate season. Why we are talking about this today to differentiate between the climate season and the society seasons. You have the second slide, please. I had this question from many people to ask me why we are having many conflicts, armed conflicts, and many humanitarian disasters, natural disasters. Why you are not engaging yourself in responding effectively by fundraising and making intervention in this area as the good old day? My answer is, or was, I've been doing this kind of effective fundraising for humanitarian response since 1984. But we discovered that we need to do something else apart from raising funds for short and long-term humanitarian response. This is based on this ayah, this verse from the Quran in Surah Tawbah. وَمَا كَانَ الْمُؤْمِنَ لَنْفُلُوا كَفَّةً and it's not for the believers to go forth all at once, not all of them, at once. For they should separate some from every division of them, a group, to remain behind, to obtain understanding in the religion and warn the people when they return to them that they might be cautious. يعني الله سبحانه وتعالى said from every from our society we have to choose qualified people to do to do certain things at the same time. Okay, next one. That's why last weekend I draw this drawing to translate the verse of the Quran. The small dots are the big society. The small circles are these groups who can deliver uh, the specialism to achieve the main aim or the main goal of the society. As Imam Saadi said, for us, we have to prepare for every speciality certain groups, certain group of people from the public to be responsible for it, to develop it, spend their time and effort. And the main aim from this small specialized group is to achieve the greater aim for the Ummah for the society, for the nation, for the country, for the region, for the continent, for humanity. To serve a deen, the religion, and the dunya, humanity. Even if we came from different paths, but all our aim is the same. This is to translate the ayah, which to answer the questions of the brothers and sisters who told me, why did you leave? Huh? The effective humanitarian response, and now are not responding to the, uh, uh, the, the needs of the Syrian, the Yemeni, the people of Myanmar, and the people of DRC and others, and doing something else. Because we have to specialize in different speciality. Effective fundraising for humanitarian response is one thing that we've been doing for the last more than 25 years. Now, for the last 10 years, we are trying to ask people to fill the gaps in the society and the humanitarian field, in advocacy, in research, 
in lobbying and building all these bridges and filling these gaps. Next, please. Coming back to us as Arabs or as Asian or as European and the wealth of each nation of us who find that the most precious resources in each society is the human resources. Don't talk to me about tourism. Don't talk to me about oil and gas. Don't talk to me about anything. Just talk to me first and last, first about the human resources. So human resources is the most precious and valuable asset that any nation has. We found the youth in Egypt, Algeria, constitute about 60%. This if we take the children away. Even in Bangladesh and Pakistan, it constitutes the same percentage, 55 to 60%, not including the children, was from zero to birth to about 15. While in UK, Germany, and Sweden, children between 12 and 16, and the youth about 50, 50% or less. Okay. That's why we need to talk today about the youth, the spring of our nations, of our country, and of our region, which we are not utilizing them effectively. Spring. Why spring? There's difference between the climate spring, the climate seasons, and the society seasons. Climate seasons come one after another. Spring, summer, autumn, then winter. Okay? You can see these seasons, climate one after another. While society seasons are happening at the same time. In each society, you find the newborn, the toddler, the child, the teenager, or the man, or the youth, the elderly, and the very, very old people at the same time. So, society, seasons happen at the same time while the climate season alternate. Okay? Let me do the other one. In society, we have a big problem. And the problem are not in the individuals, but in the leadership of the society itself. We find this problem happening in the political leadership, religious leadership, ideological and the cultural leadership, and the other leadership. Okay? That's why we need to look at this kind of leadership who are living a different age which is different than society's age itself. This is where we find that we are not utilizing all the seasons of the society which are happening at the same time. This is organization leadership. They live in the winter age of the organization or the autumn age of the organization, which separates them totally from the dynamics of the young generation in the society. Because such leadership live in the winter of their organizations and are not aware of the surrounding spring of their society and its dynamics. Sometimes they are old enough, large enough, strong enough, and arrogant enough to separate themselves from the dynamics of the society. That's why you find them isolated. 
even that cannot see the outside surrounding. The edge of the organization from the leadership. I'm talking about leadership. I'm not talking about individual. I'm talking about leadership. The Sinai organizations who live in the autumn and winter seasons will resist what? Will resist to accommodate the spring of their society in their structure. That does mean that this means that. I have a very senior people in my organization. They only believe that they are right. And they are very hesitant to engage the younger generation in the leadership of the hierarchy of the organization. They only rely on themselves because they know more than the younger generation. They have more experience and they cannot entertain the spring of the society in the hierarchy of the organization. Next. What is the solution of such an organizational problem? Our society is dynamic because it has the four seasons going side by side while our organizations are static because they are living in their winter season or their autumn season and cannot imagine the dynamic of the spring of the society which constitute in, as I mentioned, in Bangladesh, in uh, Pakistan, in uh, Egypt, in Algeria, about up to 60% of the population are the spring of the society. Solution here, organizations no matter what it is, whether political party, religious institution, jama'a, social organization, humanitarian organization, and call it such organization, okay, must have the four seasons in their leadership, including woman and Jew. This organization must put in the structure we respect the seniors but we have to include the youth and the women in the hierarchy because they constitute around 60 percent plus you cannot exclude them we don't use them as a piece of an image of a jigsaw or fundraising or something nice on a magazine but we need to make them a part of the decision making if we want to come out of the winter and the autumn and the snail age of our existing organization whether this is happening here in Europe or this is happening in the Middle East and Asia. I've become very upset because wherever I go, after leaving Islamic Relief, people don't realize that leaving such organization is a voluntary. Because they don't expect that such a successful organization, huh, having some really successful leadership, can say, okay, it's enough for us, let us go and do something else. When I used to visit some countries, well, without mentioning the names, I found that the youth are very frustrated because they have been doing the same thing for about 5, 10, 15 years. And their senior leadership do not allow them to be a part of their structure, decision-making leadership. And when you sit down with the elderly, Tell them when you are going to put this youth on the decision making table, they said it's too early for them. Still young, still soft, still unable. We tell them if you fail to train them to become leaders while you are there, it's failure, not the youth failure. So we have to include those 
women and youth in the structure of the decision making process of the organization. Unfortunately, which is actually, we found that most of the religion, religious organizations ignore such a move, unfortunately. And they talk to you about value, they talk to you about history, they talk to you about morality, they talk about something which sometimes make you sick. This is what actually we look at a part of the solution. It's very important to be inclusive not only from your theological background, not only from your religious background, not only from your ethnic background, but from the community as a whole, if we claim that we serve our community and we serve our society. And if we look here, oh, this is actually the same one. Like here, you see, why should somebody like Ban Ki-moon empower women and we don't empower them? Well, the first supporter of the Prophet وسلم, was his wife. Was his wife and was his wife. And she was advising him. She was the lobbyist and the advocate for his message. Sallallahu Why don't we involve the youth? Well, the first people, one of the first few individuals who came to support the Prophet and believe in his message were young. Even children. At that time, like Ali, but they long. And we don't empower them like the Prophet, peace be upon him, empowered them. Because what? Because we were late in the winter of our age and the winter of our organization, not in the spring of our society. Next, please. These are the societal seasons. Like we know, look at an image like this. A good could be the leader, and a good. He is the catalyst which is looking to balance between the experience of the answer, to train them, to empower them, whether they are men or women. Society has its four seasons acting at the same time, while in reality the climate has them following one another. The leadership must realize that they have the four societal seasons at the same time, Okay. to respond to their needs. Do not live inside their... I think there's something going on there, I think. Yeah. But they should not live inside the age of the organization, but they should live inside the society, diverse, dynamic action. Next. Which one we want? We want the leadership to be like this? Or the leadership to include all this? It's entirely up to us in our organizations. It's entirely up to us in our organization whether actually to be isolated, not communicating, far away from society, or to open, to open our door to see the strong spring of our society. What happened this year? It's another a part of the new beginning of a new climate change inside uh, UN. Something called World Humanitarian Summit happened, and they've been trying very much to invite a lot of Arab and Muslim organization to attend, to give a wake-up call to such organizations who are living in their winter and living in their autumn because they are relying on the political support of their own government in the Middle East or on their financial strength. Some of them 
came, but most of them, unfortunately, did not come. So this human world in the summit was a new dimension of a new spring of the humanitarian movement of the United Nations. If we do not take an effective role in maintaining its process, in maintaining its successful direction, in maintaining its dynamics, in maintaining and strengthening its partnership, it will become an autumn and will complain again and again of missing that chance that like we have been missing it many, many, many times before. So if the UN humanitarian departments decided to open up, we should go and play our role and take our position and help these departments to widen its impact and include every and anyone from the south, from the east, as well as they are from the north and from the west. This will become an autumn and winter if we do not benefit from it. We must work hard to keep its spring of the United Nations as long as we can. Society spring is endless, especially, as I mentioned earlier, in the Arab region and Asian subcontinent, Indian subcontinent, because of the uh, spring and uh, the area could come to 60% or plus, including if we include children, it will become more than 65-70%. So now organization, organization cannot manage these diverse societies. Next, please. And this is some of the participation of many organizations, which is from Yemen, from Tajikistan, from Kazakhstan, from Uzbekistan, from India, from Pakistan, from Africa, from... He is talking to everyone. Why don't we engage with them? Why don't we represent our organizations and our country and our uh, 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 philosophy of thinking with them as well? So come back to conclude, if you can go back to the first and second slide, please. In conclusion, I'm just focusing on this one. We have to have a speciality. One size does not fit all anymore. One size does not fit any does not fit everything anymore. We have to be specialized in what we're doing and be efficient in what we deliver and be excelling on our and producing our product because with the complexity of each society that we are living in we have to respond to such complexity by specialized individuals specialized organization and specialized direction okay this is my message for you today which i mentioned it yesterday in arabic Who's supposed to control the society spring? Who's and supposed to control the society spring? And how to guarantee the right process? Who's supposed to control the society spring? And how can we guarantee the its process? Huh? Right process. Yes. Ah. If you want to guarantee the right process of the society spring, we have to strengthen. We have to strengthen. We have to strengthen the civil society movement. We should not allow anyone to shrink the civil society space. I say it again, we should not allow anyone to shrink and diminish or undermine the civil society space. We should empower the civil society organizations, which include humanitarian and social. We should train leadership from the youth inside the civil society organization. Because if you want to strengthen the process, you have to have the kind of organization to maintain the stability of the parties. You see this, this road, the parties, okay? Individuals, groups, organization, go. So the answer, in a nutshell, strong civil society sector, strong civil society organization, will produce community leadership 
will produce national leadership, will produce global leadership in different specialties. And this can guarantee the successful process of saving the spring of any society. And respecting the autumn of society, and respecting the winter of society, and respecting the summer of the society. Because we have to serve the four seasons of the society. Thank you. Next week, inshallah, we'll talk about on Thursday 29th yeah, I think. in Arabic, and Friday 30th of January in Arabic, we'll talk about the challenging, the challenges facing or face the Arab Spring. The day of the day of the day of التي عطلت مسيرة الربيع العربي يوم الخميس بالعربي ويوم الجمعة بالإنجليزي الساعة ستة ونص مساء بتوقيت لندن الساعة تسعة ونص بتوقيت مكة six thirty on Thursday in the evening and in Arabic and nine thirty six thirty in six thirty on Thursday will be in Arabic and Saturday and Friday to be uh, 6.30 in, in, in London and 9.30 in Mecca. So Arabic on, on Thursday and English on Friday. Assalamu alaikum.